Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Ah, it's so good to be back here and to be in my own fresh, yummy energy. <coughs> um, yeah, it has been it has been a roller coaster for me these last couple of weeks, um, but I feel like I'm coming out the other end slowly but surely. And I have so many yummy things to share with all of you about downloads I'm getting and also realizations and learnings. And uh, I feel like the main thing is this vibration that you will be able to hear through, I don't know, making sure I can hear myself, through um, my podcast that I am in my own energy. I am in clear energy. This is me. Brittany Bond, completely on my own, in my own energy field. And the feeling of sovereignty that comes from that is so good that sometimes it makes me cry. <laughs> um, it just feels very relieving. The thing that I am excited to talk about today, the main thing, you know how these podcasts go, it's a little bit of everything all over the place, um, but the main thing is a huge learning that I have received from um, my past relationship is how important it is to have aligned values and making sure that your partner literally shares the same values as you. So when I first like thought about this, um, I had a resistance to it because my my association with the value system is uh, being in corporate for many years, uh, in corporate law for six years, and then I did corporate consulting for large businesses um, for another two years. So we spent a lot of time in the boardroom going over our value systems for uh, our relationship, like our relationships for our business. Like, what is our core values? Who do we want to be as a company? And so I associated value system with something very like emotionally distant and cold and just like not connected to who I am as a person because also those companies that I was working for and supporting and consulting, yeah, they didn't reflect my value system. So I was like building it out for someone else. Anyways, so I had a resistance to um, feeling into this idea associated with relationships Thankfully, I have amazing mentors who I learned from and I'm always listening to and incorporating their yummy uh, downloads. And one that came to me uh, when I was talking to a mentor of mine recently, she said, yeah, but did, do you feel like you and your ex had, you know, shared value system? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, because on the surface, it seems like we did. And this is why I think it's very important to to share with you like what what this means and how to how to build this for yourself. Because for me, this was like a huge eye opener. I was like, what the fuck? Why didn't I know this before? Why wasn't I applying this before? So I'm going to explain what it is and how you can do it for yourself. So like um, basically the best way to figure this out for yourself is to sit down with a piece of paper <coughs> excuse me, sit down with a piece of paper and write out what is important for you in, in a relationship. So like what makes you feel like an, a relationship is aligned? What do you need? So I'll give you some examples of like, because I even asked this to my mentor. I was like, what do you mean by values? And so some examples are creativity, kindness, loyalty, community, family, respect, teamwork so basically anything that is important for you in your personal life like how you show up in the world so what are things that you as a value system like how do you interact with the world what is important for you not in a partnership you need to make sure your partnership aligns with what's important for you already some more examples are independence spirituality like having an aligned spirituality path Um, spiritual path, humor, empathy, trust. And what you will start noticing is, so I did this, 
for myself. And what I started noticing was that many things kind of fell under the same umbrella. And for instance, I'll give you an example. Like I was like loyalty, trust, consistency, um, you know, like, yeah, just like integrity. And my mentor was like, okay, so all of these actually equal safety for you. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually my one of my core values is I need to feel safe in all ways within a um uh, within any any dynamic I'm in, any situation I'm in, one of my core values is safety. This is um this is like according to my human design, this very much aligns. Um and also this is reinforced by feeling so unsafe growing up that for me having this foundation of safety, I think also being a woman is really, really important. So for me, that, that became like the main umbrella that everything else needs to fall under. And what I found and what my mentor said is that every person usually has about two to three. I mean, you can have as many as you want, but like two to three, like core values, like, and so for mine, I, f- I found out, and I'm very excited to share, that the main one for me is safety. So any dynamic I'm in, I need to feel safe. And, um, and then the other ones are collective. Like for me, it's very important. Like everything that I am doing is serving the collective. This is my Aqua- Aquarius rising. This is just who I am in the timeline. This is being a 5-1 generator on human design. Like I'm here to serve. I'm here to like what is happening in the collective? How can I serve the collective? This is and every di- every relationship I'm in needs to support that. They need to support me serving the collective or or they need to help like, you know, serve the collective with me basically. Um so that was really important to find out. And then the last one for me, the third one was connection. So this for me like <laughs> Like, I literally on the human design have the the cross of alignment. So that means like as a life theme, I'm here to like align energies within people's bodies, but also literally like connect everyone. And I got this download uh, when I took ayahuasca that my main mission here in the timeline is to connect all of my soul family and all of us new earth leaders together. What happens after that is no longer my job. But my mission is to find everyone and bring us all together and literally connect us all together. And this is what I have been doing for, um, sorry, I'm just distracted because there's like a random guy in my backyard just staring at plants, (laughs) you know, casual tie things that happen. Um, But yeah, when I was, when I was doing, (laughs) I don't know why that guy threw me off so much. But he's, yeah, he's just staring in the window. It's like, okay. And he saw me staring back at him. So now he's walking away. Great. Anyways, so um, connection. Every relationship that I have needs to add to and support the connection that I have to myself, to my higher self, to them, to my soul family, to this mission that I have to connect all of us new earth leaders especially and to bring in our you know our new earth community which is forming right now I can feel it I mean it literally is happening here it's been happening on the ground here on Copenhagen for many years that I've been here but now it's starting to happen with all of you lovely souls who are all over the world and listening in and adding your vibration to this collective this community, this connection that we are building. Because the new earth is a vibration. It's a vibrational reality that we all need to be on first. And then it it physicalizes within our dimension that we're in. I don't want to say 3D dimension because we're actually shifting dimensions, but you get what I mean. So like our physical dimension that we are experiencing in these physical bodies, it first will happen vibrationally. And so again core value needs to be that whatever relationship i'm in adds to this connection that i'm 
constantly brewing I'm like percolating it I kind of I jokingly call it like a soup like I'm always like okay this person can add to this and this person and this is why I love human design so much because I use it as a tool to connect my community and connect all the people that I know need to meet each other in order to play this game out of building our new earth community and timeline that we're on so it was super interesting for me to do this value like system building for myself for relationships <laughs> like I was saying before I did it for companies but that doesn't really resonate with me but to do it for myself within relationship dynamics because I was like oh my god I feel so seen but like by myself because <laughs> I was like this is this is exactly yeah this is who I am and this is what I need and then I applied that to my last relationship and I was like whoa everything was so out of alignment even though it seemed like on the surface um, the dynamic and I like to talk more about the dynamic between me and my ex-partner more than him as a person because I really feel that um, that is more beneficial because again, <laughs> I don't want to say so many things, but like we can be individuals, but then when we merge together in a, in a relationship, when we merge our energies together in a relationship dynamic, how we respond to each other can be very different than how I would respond to another person when we merge our energies together. Does that make sense? So like the dynamic between me and my ex-partner was not healthy because so I'll just go through them so like I <clears throat> on the surface in the so this this was something I find really interesting is I wasn't being up until now I hadn't been very clear within myself of what safety I needed within a relationship so my father this is my core wound my father was very emotionally and psychologically abusive for all of my life and only until the last part when my mom actually tried to leave him and was like getting ready to you know make her exit with us <laughs> also like taking the kids and leaving did my dad get physically violent but in my head i was um i was associating safety with physical safety and maybe also like mental safety like being on the same page of like where we are aligned and what we believe is a structure of reality and like where we're going in the timeline and all this stuff but I didn't realize and this is something I own and I integrate and it's so beautiful to like realize this is that I wasn't prioritizing feeling emotionally safe within my relationship so safety for me in all the ways is what is needed for me to be able to be in a relationship with someone going forward and with the dynamic with my ex-partner I felt you know like mentally safe because we were able to connect on all of these universal structure of reality things I felt financially safe because he was a good provider in that way I felt I mean I guess like yeah, I, I felt physically safe like I never felt like he was going to hurt me or anything like this but emotionally safe this was like my blind spot because I had been so used to being gaslighted growing up and feeling very, so like my connection with the masculine in my life was being so used to not feeling emotionally safe so it's interesting because in all other relationship dynamics I have I have healed this like or maybe it just never needed to be healed because it wasn't a trauma um, I feel I have many many relationships with men that are my friends like friendships with men uh, where I feel very emotionally safe I can sit and share all my feelings they can host me so it's not that it's not all masculine that I needed to heal this it was with my primary partner it was like this blind spot I had that like, oh, if my primary partner fits these boxes, um, because this is what my dad fit. My dad was very, you know, like societally in the social standing was a leader and he was, you know, financially very secure and, you know, physically up until the end was safe. But 
emotionally he wasn't safe. And so this was the reoccurring thing I was playing out. So this made me feel really excited to figure out because now going forward, that's going to be like the first thing I make sure of because I know it's my blind spot. Any uh, relationship dynamic I ever get into, the person needs to feel emotionally safe, emotionally able to hold me and whatever is coming through and emotionally like mature enough to play the game on the level that I'm at. And it's all a game, you know? It's like, because of all the trauma that I have been through, I understand emotions, I understand connection, I understand relation, relating to each other on a level that I feel like most people will never get to in their lives. And I'm not saying that facetiously. I'm not saying that to say I'm a better person. I actually... <laughs> Uh, do not wish upon anyone the amount of trauma that I have been through. And also when you go through that and you survive that and you choose to thrive from it, you have seen the depths of relating emotional, the emotional depths that go with com going through that tr amount of trauma and coming out of it. It's like, you know, the game that you're playing from an emotional level is like a lot higher than most people. But it comes with some scars, right? And it comes with needing to create a lot more space for myself to feel safe. And that's okay. It, it's like what everything is okay as long as we create space for it and honor whatever our needs are. And we align with someone who has the same value system as us or that can honor, that is like complementary to our value system. So it's not like I need to find someone else where their core value is they need safety. I just need that person to be safe for me. Does that make sense? <laughs> and they can have completely different value systems and just it would just need to make sure that I just complement their value system and give them what they need naturally. Um, the second thing, <coughs> excuse me, the second thing I'll go into is the collective. Like, um, it's really important for me in the future that whoever I am partnering with, they have the same mission as me to support the collective and guide the collective. And they are actually doing it in a way that aligns with how I'm doing it. <laughs> and uh, I'm laughing because, again, on the surface, my ex-partner seemed like he had this big community and he was leading it and all these things. But I recognize now that I am here as a embodied woman you know, I have my inner girl in me. I'm super down to play. There's so much play in me that happens. Um, and also, I know that I'm here to lead and to be a leader and to be the mom of the community. And I love that. I, I fucking love it. It's like who I am in my soul. Um, and I am making sure that the next person that I partner with also wants to be the masculine equivalent of that, to be the father of the community and actually have the maturity and the groundedness and the depth to be able to hold that um, and understand that that service and that responsibility is such a gift. It is such a gift that we have been given and such an honor to like you know, fulfill. Like, I feel that it is an honor to be here sharing all of this with all of you and to be this beacon of light if it is helping you to feel more in your power and it's helping you to feel more embodied and it's helping you to feel like you are connected, you are part of the collective and you are safe. See, these core values keep coming up. Um, and it's really beautiful to recognize all of this for myself because I'm like, Oh my God, yeah, this is who I am. This is, and it just, oh, I feel like, yeah, I just want to take a deep breath and relax into it because I'm not trying to be anything that I'm not. I'm just like, this is who I am, you know? And whoever comes into my life needs to align with who I am. And it's really beautiful. And yeah, the last one is like connection. So, the partner that I had, the main partner that I had before that I built my community space with here, <coughs> um, 
when him and I were going through a really hard time and he, um, I'm not going to go into the stories, but we were going through a very hard time individually and as a couple. And that partner told me, I don't want you to tell anyone what's going on with us. And I felt so alone. I felt so disconnected from my, my soul family and the people who really love me. And I told myself after that relationship that uh, whoever I'm with, I'm going to make sure I build my soul family first and they align with my soul family. Like basically that I have, I have a support network. I really believe that relationships are only meant to be had in the support of a community. That's really how, like that's how tribes were built. That's how we are built. Um, and nowadays everything has just gotten so siloed and so disconnected and I'm here for all the connections. So over the course of two years after that relationship ended, <coughs> I built my soul family. Like I had them, but I like put a lot of energy into building them and connecting them to each other and like really creating this dynamic of we're here for each other. You know what's going on in my life. Like I, I've said this in past podcasts, but I, I literally have them in my phone. There's probably 15 of them. They're spread across the whole world. Some are here in Copenhagen. A lot of them come through every year. But I have them as like their name and then family with a special emoji so that my brain immediately knows or I can just type into my WhatsApp family and whoever is available can be there to support me. And they want to be there to support me and I want to be there to support them. This is the beautiful symbiotic relationship of soul family. And I told myself that the next like after this this last relationship um, with m my partner that I built the community space with, I told myself, the next relationship I'm in, I, I want my soul family to be able to support me along the way so that it can be a successful relationship because I knew deep in myself, in my soul, that that was the only way I was going to be able to have a healthy, for me, not, I'm not saying this is for everyone, but I do think it is a very important thing, um, was to be supported by my collective, my community, my soul family, and to have the relationship with my partner to add to that connection, you know, like through them supporting me and my connection with my partner, where everyone is more and more connected. It's like this beautiful energy, warm energy bubble that just keeps circulating. And then I look back on how it actually went down with this last partner that I had. And we went into this love bubble for the first six months. And a lot of my soul family was actually here on the island during that high season. Like it was like that winter. And I didn't see any of them. I didn't see, I didn't, and I'm not going to go into why. I'm not going to go into the story. But I'm just going to say that I really own now that I built the soul family and the dynamic wasn't healthy with me and my ex-partner and I disconnected from my soul family in a moment when I actually should have used them, not used them, but like utilized their support to um, like verify that my connection with my partner was healthy because of my blind spots, remember? And so now what I've learned is that going forward, any partnership that I'm in, it's going to be a big either red flag or green flag if naturally I am more connected to my soul family while I'm in a partnership with them. Like they support my soul family, they're friends with my soul family, you know, they encourage me to connect with them and I'm able to utilize this support network in, you know, in supporting me in connection with my partner. So again, this is all stuff that I have learned and I find it to be really beautiful to share all of this with you. And I hope that this is like helpful for you <laughs> because for me, this was like <laughs> such a big, like, what the fuck? Why didn't I do this before? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I wrote down some notes. I want to make sure. Oh, um, yeah. So some other things I want to talk about was you know, since releasing these last two podcasts that I've made uh, about my last breakup, um, so many women have reached out to me and said how much um, they resonated. You all resonated with the story and that you've actually been through like very similar things and that it was very like 
it was very beautiful and you know that you just felt really like connected because of this like wow we're all going through the same thing and something that I want to reflect that I've noticed a pattern in in those that have shared with me is that this is why I said in one of the podcasts that we need to be careful as women um basically like as a woman you are like this beautiful goddess right like like men should be worshiping at your feet but what happens is because of the the paradigm that we are born into and because of societal programming that we have, we have it flipped inside of us where we don't realize how valuable we are. And we don't realize that we actually lead on the dynamic of energy that happens within a partnership. And all of it starts with how much you value yourself. So if you are like this analogy I was using before, if you are, (coughs) excuse me, if you are acting like you're crawling through a desert and you're like desperate for men's attention and you'll just like drink whatever muddy water that is the attention of a man because you're so thirsty for it and you're craving it so much instead of realizing that you're a fucking goddess and you deserve like the most cleanest divine water that comes from this oasis of paradise that is meant for you and destined for you if you can just hold out and set your standards and hold to them this is what makes me really want to say this to you i also believe that let me just say it first and i can say all the way up (laughs) sometimes i have so many things i want to say in coming out of my mouth that they get like it's like a traffic jam in my head to my mouth okay so the thing i want to say is you set the tone in your relationship dynamic. When you value yourself and you hold to this value, the universe will reflect to you a man who externally demonstrates the value that you internally have for yourself. So if you believe that you are worthy of someone who is emotionally safe and and safe in all the rest of the ways and who loves you and respects you and worships you and that person isn't currently reflected to you externally in your partner or whoever you're having a relationship with right now and you start cleaning this energy up externally where you say, hey, this is actually my value. These are my standards. You have the, now that I've communicated this, you have the opportunity to rise to my standards or you need to, you know, with love, remove yourself from my life, like separate with love. And then you actually hold to that standard. So this means that like, if a guy did what happened to me, which some of you have said this to me, that this actually happened to you, where you were in an open dynamic with someone and the man broke the dynamic, the agreements. And then you stayed. So he wasn't actually, he didn't actually like, he didn't actually feel bad. He wasn't remorseful. You know, like there was no energy of resolution. It was just kind of like, oh yeah, I did the thing. And you kind of just need to deal with it. And then you just kind of dealt with it. And you just like put up with it. So that's telling the universe that you deserve to be disrespected. And that your value is not, is not that high because you're accepting in your current external reality a situation that doesn't match that it matches the value of of that of like being disrespected because you're allowing it to happen the other timeline is that you choose to value yourself like yeah things happen we open our hearts people people choose whether they are going to be in alignment with that or not. (coughs) So it's not, I had someone write to me, Brittany, it's not that you, like you didn't do anything wrong by trusting him. So don't get upset at yourself that you're in a situation where someone betrayed your trust. It happens. And of course, yes, (laughs) other people are telling me through comments online that, you know, because of my trauma or because of my, lower value system in the past and lower self-worth in the past, I attracted in a man that matched that vibrationally. 
I would agree with that. I would also say through this relationship with my ex-partner, I have really reaffirmed my value system and really become the woman that I am meant to be in this timeline. And once I became that, I was like, oh, no fucking way. No, thank you. Bye. So at every given moment, you're allowed to shift. Like, say you brought someone into your life vibrationally and you allowed this person in that's not treating you as the goddess that you are. You, at every given moment, through your actions, through how you show up, through how you speak up, can shift that. And it's not going to, not all of them are actually going to end in the same way that that me and my ex-partner did, where we break up. What's beautiful is that you lead, you as the feminine lead the relationship energetically by you valuing yourself. So when you say to your partner, like, hey... This is what I'm this is what I'm worth. This is how I will be treated. This is my standard. You have the opportunity now to like you tell your partner, you have the opportunity now to shift and raise your vibration to meet the standard. And sometimes they do. This is this is the beauty of it. This is the activation. This is the divine feminine. We activate the the masculine to care enough we have to care enough about ourselves to activate them to care enough to wake up to become the man they're meant to be so a lot of this is super interesting for me the more that i've been sitting with this over the last couple days and weeks is how much we as the feminine actually have way more power in these situations than we realize because we have to hold to our standards and speak up and be in our power. And then the man can choose to let this activation come into him and rise to the occasion and become this man. It's like, yeah, you got to work for it. If you if you want to be with this goddess, you have to work for it. You have to be the man who deserves to stand by my side. And a lot of them will probably actually work for it, you know, and some of them might not. Maybe they're not ready for it, but they will go off. Even if you break up, they will go off and they will, they will, they will figure it out, you know, like maybe they need to have a couple more relationships where the woman is like, hey, no, this is my standard. And then they're going to wake up to like, oh, I can't play the game like this anymore. So if all of us women were holding to our standards and speaking our value system and allowing the, the man to either rise to the occasion or fade away, things would shift very quickly in the collective. And of course, I'm also speaking to the fact that once this man actually does show up for you and is the man who is worshiping you and valuing you and putting you first and understanding that it's a fucking honor to be standing by your side and showing up for you, and then this is this is the symbiotic energy loop that happens is when you appreciate him for doing that and you value him and you worship him because he has proven to you that you are his goddess and he has proven to you by his consistent action and trust that is built over time then it is time to worship him as as the god as the god as as a god in the timeline in the sense of like he is a king he deserves he deserves to have your appreciation and your admiration because he has proven it do not give away your appreciation your admiration and your love for to men who have not proven that they deserve it this is a big thing that i have learned in this last partnership that it takes consistent action over time for a man to earn the right to your love and your trust and your approval and your admiration. And actually, this is what men want. They want to be, they want to have an opportunity to prove that they are worthy. It's like if you give it to them right away, it's almost like, yeah, they don't value it. They don't value you. They don't value the relationship. And I'm not saying, I'm not talking about playing games at all. I'm talking about allowing your nervous system to have consistent action from the masculine before you open your heart to them, before you open your body to them. I had a thing before my ex-partner where I just naturally got into this rhythm where I was 
having at least four dates with a man before I would even consider anything sexual with him. And now it's going to be a lot more. (laughs) Now it's going to be like, let's be friends for a year. I don't know. Like, I just feel very much like I have learned a lot in this one about how much I deserve and what my standards are. And they are so much fucking higher than they were before this relationship, which I am so grateful for. And I really believe that the next person, they're just, they're just going to be the person. They're going to be the person that is in my visions and I can feel this vibration. And it's just going to be a, a process of verifying that they are that person through lived experience and through trust and through allowing them to show up in my life in a way that is beautiful and adding to my life. And then I will admire them and I will appreciate them and I will give them my yummy goddess energy, my high priestess energy that can manifest anything in the timeline. (sighs) So I'm sharing all of this because um, we as women, a lot of times... I mean, in this collective timeline, there's many things I could go into, but like men in general, they, (laughs) there's so much I could say right now. Men in general um, do not have, like in the original tribal sense, like imagine, I have Native American in me, like DNA, and I really connect to Native American spirituality and a lot of the cultural things that come from that. And one of the main things, this is happening in most tribes, but in Native American, this still, uh, culture, this still happens to this day, which I find really beautiful that they have kept the culture, is that when a man comes of age, he goes through what we call a rite of passage. And within the Native American cultures, um, every tribe does it a little differently, but the main thing is the man goes out into the wilderness with the elders And he does, sometimes he takes psychedelics, plant medicine, sometimes they go hunting and he has to like prove to himself in the wilderness that he can take care of himself and also provide for his tribe by bringing something back, (coughs) like bringing some food back that he's hunted. There's like, there is this rite of passage where there is a before and after. There is a, you are a child and now you are a man. And when you are a man, you get these responsibilities within your tribe and you also get this praise and this admiration from your tribe by showing up for them. So it's kind of showing a man how to show up within a relationship dynamic, but the tribe, the elders in the tribe and the tribe itself teaches them. So, and the main thing that it teaches them is that to be of service as the masculine is the most rewarding thing that a masculine, a person who was born in a, you know, whoever is, (laughs) words, masculine leaning energy if you have more masculine energy in you this is the thing that you want to do in the timeline is serve because you realize that is the biggest honor because when you serve and you protect and you provide and you create safety for the people that you love they give you all you fill up on all of this yummy energy from them by letting them receive it they receive it and they give it back to you in this appreciation and admiration and you know like almost worshiping who you are in the sense of like you have become this amazing angel in their life like wow you've you know like you've given me everything I've ever wanted and more wow oh thank you thank you for existing thank you for showing up thank you for being here I honor you this energy for the masculine is literally fuel for them to become more of the man they're meant to be, to give them energy to go do more of the things, to create more abundance, to bring more things home for their tribe and their family. We have lost this in the timeline. And so there's so many men, boy, man, children, whatever you want to go. People who age-wise are men, but emotionally and psychologically, they're still children because they don't, we don't have one, we don't have a lot of positive masculine role models in the timeline. And two, even if we do, there isn't this collective rite of passage that's happening. 
So even if someone, a man wants to become a man, he's like, what do I do? Where do I go? What does it even mean to be a man in the timeline that is showing up and providing? Um, this is why I really enjoy, there's a, a group in the States. I've talked to the founder a couple of times because I really want him to come out here to Copenhagen. It's called Sacred Sons, S-A-C-R-E-D, Sons. You can find them on Instagram, but they are doing... Wow, they're in the States and they're doing amazing work for men. And literally one of their main things is these rite of passages, rite of passage retreats for men. And it doesn't matter your age, you can go and be part of this group of men who are out in the wilderness. They're do they're like literally out there doing rite of passage stuff. They're like hunting. I don't know if they're hunting because everyone's kind of turning vegan as we all wake up, but they're doing things like with their hands in the wilderness and they're connecting to each other and they're sharing about, you know, what does it mean to be a divine masculine in the timeline? How can we show up for our tribe and our family and all the people that we love? <coughs> I like want, I want the, there to be groups like that all over the world because this is for me, like, like when I saw one of their first videos, I just burst into tears because I was like, this is so healing. This is so connecting. This is like what we need, you know, because I know when, when men get what they need, they want, they show up for the, the women in their life. They want to show up. A lot of times they just don't know how to do it in a way that is positive. And, um, I even had it reflected to me by a friend who was a man recently that he says, he's like, you know, I've been listening to some of your podcast and I just wanted to reflect to you this kind of black and white dynamic that you like terminology you use I found this really interesting so I want to share it with all of you he's like you say like what does it mean to be a good man and what does it mean to be a bad man and he was like I don't believe that anyone is inherently good or bad I believe that who we are is who we sh choose to show up every single day like through consistent action and so he was recommending that it's actually better to share like yeah, kind of what I did earlier in the podcast, like a value system of like, who do I want to be as a person? What is important to me? And like, for me, because safety is so important, I can share from my own experience how men can show up in a way that creates more safety for women and, you know, creates more connection and can serve the collective, like, because these are my value systems. And to let go of this black and white ideology that, either you're a good man and you're all the because he was also saying that even if you deem someone a good man Brittany that kind of in a way gives this them, them this like all all encompassing past that like whatever they do from now on is means they're still a good man because you just decided they are and he's like no like men need need to know what are the guidelines that can create safety that can create uh security and you know, this foundation of support and protection that women need. So like give them the guidelines and then the game, which is a beautiful thing, I say in a, like a, a beautiful way, like the game of life is for them to every day show up consistently to be a man who, you know, is following those guidelines. And also the flip side, if you deem someone a bad man, it's like they're allowed to change who they are at every given moment, depending on their consistent actions. And I was like, whoa. This is a really good download. I'm going to share this. So shout out to Josh for sharing that with me. Um, and this is also why I made my last podcast because I was like, I really believe that every man actually at their core wants to be someone of value for the people that they love. They want to show up for the people that they love. They want to create safety and to protect and to provide. And so what we can do as the feminine is, yeah, hold vibrational space for them as a collective, as a tribe. On an individual level, what we need to do as women is hold to our fucking standards and our boundaries and say, no, I deserve better than this. You can go off on your hero's journey if you choose to, or you can fuck around and be a man child the rest of your life. Again, that is your choice, but I no longer am going to receive this standard, my standards of how I choose to be treated and respected and loved and provided for are higher than this. You know what I mean? And one thing that I have really realized in this situation with my ex-partner is 
how much it is a privilege for a man to show up in my life and support me because um you know I grew up in an environment where I didn't get that much support and so also this was a blind spot I had where like when someone especially a man wanted to show up for me like over the years I was like oh wow this is like so surprising again in the de desert analogy like I was like wow water water is here even if it wasn't you know, actually for my benefit, even if it was toxic water in the end or poisoned or whatever, I was just like, wow, there's water. And as I have become the woman that I am today and really embodied who I know that I am and what I deserve, I realized, wow, it is such a privilege for a man to show up for me because he gets to receive my yummy energy when I really... And if you have ever been on the receiving end of Brittany Bond's yummy, <laughs> appreciative energy, you will understand. Because I'm like, mm, thank you so much. This makes me feel so good in my body. Like, thank you for showing up for me. Thank you for being a divine masculine in my life. I like really appreciate you and who you are. And I'm here to support you as well. Like emotionally, I will give you my energy of support. And I'll tell you that that is a yummy thing to receive. <laughs> I just know from reflections I've had from men. And when I opened myself again to this, um, after my last partnership, <laughs> there's been like, um, Anna, my friend who's living with me right now, uh, she calls them suitors. I was like, Anna, are we in the 1800s? Like suitors is like, you know, like, <laughs> what is it? I've been watching Bridger Bridgerton, Bridgerton words i've been watching you know like this 1800s when the men come over and they're like hello i have brought you flowers hello would you like to go on a walk and they're like these suitors who want to marry you i have been since i am now single like an an unlimited amount of suitors popping up everywhere and what i realized is that it's like so beautiful to really one, test out all of these value systems that I have because there's men who have come into my life recently who match safety for me on levels um, that I have not received before. But <coughs> I'm trying to not get super specific because I want to honor the privacy. But basically, like, I just realized that I deserve to feel safe in all ways. And although there's suitors men who have come into my life who you know can honor one of the value systems but not all of them i'm like oh no no no! i deserve all of it i deserve all of it and there's an unlimited amount of men who are trying to give me all of it and so now it's just allowing myself to feel safe to receive and i do feel safe this is something i'm really grateful for that i've learned through this last dynamic of partnership that i've had is um because I felt very unsafe emotionally in a lot of ways, um, but then also very safe in other ways, I was able to really look at it and embody it and integrate it. And wow, I have such strong trust in the universe um, and like where I'm meant to be. And this is why I was saying in the last podcast, like I have, because of that, I have so many opportunities coming into my life right now that I in the past wouldn't have opened myself to because of limiting beliefs um, around safety and needing to you know all the things um, so it feels really great to feel like oh my gosh everything's aligned I can just trust the universe I'm home like in my body in this house on this island and also the universe is guiding me to wherever I'm meant to be next. And all I have to do is receive and be appreciative and grateful and feel yummy in my body. Um, so that all is really great. I feel like I'm rambling now. A lot of times I go, I judge myself, not judge, but I like think I am going on a tangent. And I'm like, oh, I went on a tangent. And then friends are like, you know, I listened to your your um podcast and that was not a tangent that was like channeling so i'm like okay whatever is meant to be so 
The last thing I want to say is that if you are a woman in this timeline and you are like me, where you are um, allowing yourself to be your fully embodied feminine self, which includes being very, very sensitive and being able to feel everything. Please remember that this is a superpower. This is this is the women having the ability to be able to feel everything everywhere all the time is actually one of our biggest psychic abilities. It's our biggest connection to spirit. Like I can lay in bed at night, especially with people I have a strong energy connection with, like people I love and am friends with or soul family or whatever, have some sort of connection. I can lay in bed at night and I can feel how they feel. I can tap into their energy and I can feel how they feel. I can even do what's called remote viewing where I can see them. Like in my mind's eye, I can see what they're doing. This is a superpower. It also comes with a lot of vulnerability in the sense that, yeah, we feel everything. So not only the good stuff, but we feel the painful stuff, you know? And... I I feel like it's really important to say that you should not allow yourself or anyone else to shame or blame you for being able to feel at that depth of emotions. You actually should be honored and exalted. So you yourself need to honor yourself and praise yourself for being able like say like good job that I can have this depth of emotion that I can allow myself to feel things in such intensity and have the capacity to allow that much emotion and that much energy to move through your body. And then attract in, by you honoring yourself, you attract in other people externally, men, women, everyone, who reflects that level of honoring you and honoring your emotions and having the capacity to hold space for this beautiful energy that is moving through your body. (sighs) So I invite you to take a deep breath. (sighs) Um, I'm in the middle of getting like, I had my own podcast equipment when my ex and I got together and then we ended up sharing his for so long that I sold mine. And now I'm in the middle of rebuilding my equipment. Um, So I hope that the audio on this is good. I was borrowing a friend's mic and I'm going to order my own soon. But you know, I woke up this morning and I was like, I need to make a podcast. I just have days like that where I'm like, I got to go. I got to go. And my friend Anna's like, your energy is very intense. And I'm like, because I have things to say to the collective. Let's go. (laughs) Anyways, I'm sending you all so much love. And thank you again for being with me on this journey that I am on currently and, you know, continuing on into the future. And thank you for letting me be with you on your journey for all of you who have reached out and shared. And I really invite you in the comments, if you're watching this on YouTube, to share how this feels for you. If you have any questions, like I really invite an active community who feels safe to speak up any reflections that you have, I am here for all of them. Even the quote-unquote critical ones, I always look at them. I always receive them. You know, I'm always here for it because this is how we grow. And yeah, um, this week I'm taking time for myself, but starting next week I'm, open t- I'm opening my calendar again to do human design readings. So if you are interested in that, you can send me a message on Instagram. It's at Brittany Bond. And um, I can share anything else that you need to know about it. I really love doing them. And I'm excited to do more of you. (laughs) Do more of you. Words. I'm excited to do more of them with you guys. Because I know how impactful it is. So many of you say that it literally changes your life. I'm here for all of it. Let's go. Okay. I am sending you all so much love. And I hope you have an amazing day. And I'll see you in the next podcast.